Warning. You've reached on the box with great comfort and are now in a biblical truth zone. Place all questions about theology, current events, and evangelism on the box where they'll be weighed against the truth of God's Word. Ready your hearts and minds. You're about to be inspired and equipped to fulfill the Great Commission. Programming to engage in five, four, three, two, one. All right, welcome to On the Box. I am Mark Spence. This is Ray Comfort. Hooray. <laughs> hear the crickets? <laughs> yeah, I heard the crickets. <laughs> On the other hand, watch this. And this is Brad Snow. <laughs> See uh, that? People are excited for Brad, but not for you or I. <laughs> That's the way it is. That's the way it is. Did you see that uh, football thing this morning? Oh, boy. Did I ever. They, what they, did I? He, I don't think he was a running back. Was he a linebacker? He was a linebacker. He was a linebacker. With uh, Kent State, and he uh, ran 50, was it 50, uh, 58 yards in the wrong direction. Who's oh. counting? I, I felt for the guy. I tell you, empathy just oozed out of me because I've got the directions of a dead goose. I can get lost real easy, as you probably know. And this guy, he grabs the ball and he runs in the wrong direction. For, for, and what worried me wasn't the fact that I could understand he was running the wrong direction. It was the guy that chased him and tackled him. Yeah. Why did they do that? Well, in fact, you know, the, the coach had uh, yelled at his player for tackling him. And he said, why didn't you just let him get into the end zone? He was yeah. about ready to score for us. Yeah. And uh, that's the way it is. I think a lot of people are running in a direction, but they don't know where they're heading, do they? Mm. Well, I, I, my thought was that they, they couldn't be that stupid as to chase a guy that was running the wrong direction. They were trying to stop him because he was embarrassing himself. That's what I'm hoping. They're trying to help him. Yeah, I think so. And that's why they tell him. say, what are you doing? You're making a fool. You were on television and yeah. all that. So, and, Man is um, basically good, and they're trying to reach out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're saying to the world, turn around, and we don't just stand and holler at them. We tackle them. Ooh. We go into all the world because we empathize with them. We do. No, Ray, if you were to see a blind man heading for a cliff and he was wearing headphones and he didn't know the cliff was coming, what what really would you do? Would you tackle him? <laughs> I'd film it. We could use it for our programs for a gray anecdote. We could use it. <laughs> now, when you tackle them, you'd probably tackle them towards the cliff. And and both go over. Would, We'd both go over. <laughs> there, there, and there goes the banana man. Yes. <laughs> oh, speaking of that, we were open air preaching in, uh, in uh, University of Arkansas. Yes. Uh, on... Uh, was it Wednesday? Yes. Some guy in the audience says, that's the banana man. That's the banana man. It was, it was great. It was a, he ended up being a great heckler. I pulled him out when I realized what he was saying and said, stand up on that box. Let's have a talk. And it was good. And it was, yeah. Well, you know, a lot of people who go off on you concerning the whole banana analogy haven't realized, I believe, have fallen right into the hand of God because it's given you quite the platform. Wonderful. And you've been able to use it uh, and preach the gospel. Springboarded off that banana. We've got atheists watching today probably because of the banana. Because of the banana. Mm. Welcome. I, when was the last time you had a banana, Ray? I don't eat the things. I go shaky when I look at them. I had one today. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, we do have people inside of our audience today, and we didn't have to pay these people. And I will say their first names, Lori, Lisa, Kendrick, Dave, and Kathy, and they all live together. No, they go to <laughs> different churches. I don't know where they go. That's where they are, but they're here. We, we don't, don't have a we camera? We don't have a camera. We don't have a camera on you guys. Sorry. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's just see. <laughs> that is proof that they're here. Proof that they are here. Well, we have a uh, question of the week winner. Question of the week winner. And... What do you win? You get to win the two-in-one CD. It's a CD that I've listened to hundreds of times, but not as many times as Ray has preached the messages. How many times have you preached Hell's Best Kept Secret, Ray? 836 times. Wow. Now, does that include, if you're at one church and you share that message three times? Yes, it does. It does. Yes. 800, more than 800 times. Well, the winner is... I don't know who the winner is. Ray Comfort. <laughs> yeah, I guess <laughs> we're going to tell you by email. But um, the question was this. What are some good responses to sharing the gospel on the street and hearing judge not? Opening my Bible and explaining the context through Matthew 7, which is judge with righteous judgment, etc., could take more time than most people are interested in sitting through you sharing. Do you have any quick phrases to diffuse the discussion and get back to the gospel? So you're up there on the pulpit, wherever you want to be, maybe the soapbox, yeah. and somebody yells out to you, Ray Comfort, hey, judge not, lest you be judged. I give the answer that that person gave. I say, well, if you read the context, Jesus is saying, when you use judgment, use righteous judgment, and what it's talking about is Christians putting one another down. Yeah. 
don't, not judging one another. And the, and the, the context is actually in Romans 14 when it says, why do you judge your brother and set your brother at nothing or at naught? Right. So, yeah, that's the quick answer that I give. And then I just go back. But the, those sort of people don't want to know an answer. They just want to stop you preaching. Mm. That's a Brad. Have you uh, experienced that? You're up on the soapbox. Oh, yeah. Somebody yells at you, slaps you at the quarter, and you uh, say <laughs> what? Well, I have a few quick responses, but the, there's one in particular I like. Uh, it's a something that I was inspired by. Uh, it, the good person test, I asked, uh, it's, uh, I came up with my own test. I call it the judgmental person test. So I said, do you consider yourself to be a judgmental person? And if they're reasonable, they'll respond and say, no, I'm not judgmental. Well, I said, let me ask you a few questions, see if that's true. I'll ask them, is it wrong for a person to kill a five-year-old child? Is that wrong? And they'll say, well, of course that's wrong, you know, if they're reasonable. Uh, I'll ask them, is it wrong for a man to rape a woman? Uh, clearly, yes, that's wrong. Uh, if a man uh, was guilty of robbing a bank, he killed all his hostages, it was caught on video, they brought him before the judge, would it be wrong for the judge to let him go? And they, well, clearly that would be wrong. I said, well, the results are, it turns out you are a judgmental person. But the good news is, <laughs> is that you judged rightly. And there's a coming a day that God will judge us all, and he'll make sure that his judgment is perfect. Uh, do you consider yourself to be a good person? And then I continue on. But Boy, that is really good, Brad. I love it. Yeah, I think it was very judgmental, actually. You did? <laughs> yeah. Is that your judgment? That's my judgment. You know, that's what I say. If I'm up there, it depends on the person and how they're asking. If somebody were to come across as being sincere, hey, but aren't you judging these people? Shouldn't we not judge? You know, I might come across and say, hey, you know, there's nothing wrong with judging. There's nothing wrong with drawing a line in the sand and saying, hey, rape is wrong. Mm -hmm. Murder is wrong. Kidnapping is wrong. And so we don't just stop there because God doesn't stop there. God also says lying is wrong. Stealing mm -hmm. is wrong. And I might try to relate to them a little bit better. But if they come across like, hey, the man upstairs, the good book says, and mm -hmm. judge not unless you be judged, I'll say, hey, is that your judgment? If it's wrong to judge, well, then stop judging my judgment. That's your worldview. Yeah, and they're, and, doing, it, they're doing it publicly. And they are. They, <laughs> they are doing it publicly. But it's easy to turn that around because all uh, relativism is self-refuting. Relativism simply means it's up to each individual, really by and large, to decide what is right and wrong, good and bad, sacred and secular. And if they're going to go off on you, well, then really they should go off on themselves. Well, if you disagree with us, we'd love to hear from you. No, well, no one disagree with us. Nobody would disagree with us. Maybe there might be a couple people out there. <laughs> Mom, if you're watching and you want to write in, <laughs> you can write to us at on the box at livingwaters.com. On the box at livingwaters.com. We also have a blog on the box.us. A Facebook and Twitter, just type in on the box, see what you come up with. We might be in the top 10 if you type that in. Hmm. That's one way to get a hold of us. Yeah. You ever want to get a hold of Ray Comfort? One of those might be the way. If not, so be it. Hey, well, Bill Nye, the science guy, yeah. he is making the news. I don't know too much about this guy other than he's a very snappy dresser. He dresses like James White. He's got the <laughs> bow tie. Yeah. I like to see the two debate each other. Yeah. Well, Bill Nye's made the news. Yeah. Did you see that? Didn't you used to watch his program when you were a kid? I've never heard of this guy. I he's was, he's I called the science guy, and they had all sorts of little science things. And it's quite well produced. Hmm. Well, you know, I, I wouldn't mind tuning in to see if he's got anything good in there. If there's any really good science, obviously it's going to relate and correlate to Scripture. So we'll see what he has to say there. But he's making the news, and he has a video out there that we want to share with you today. This is Bill Nye, and he talks about how creationism is not appropriate for children. And then we will have Ray pontificate on his thoughts with Brad following him up with that. So here's the video, Bill Nye, the science guy. Denial of evolution is unique to the United States. I mean, we are the world's most advanced technological. So, I mean, you could say Japan, but generally the United States is where most of the innovation still happens. People still move to the United States. Uh, and that's largely because of the intellectual capital we have, the, the general understanding of science. When you have a portion of the population that doesn't believe in that, it holds everybody back, really. Evolution is the fundamental idea in all of life science, in all of biology. It's like, it's very much analogous to trying to do geology without believing in tectonic plates. You're just not going to get the right answer. Your whole world is just going to be a mystery instead of an exciting place. As my old professor Carl Sagan said, when you're in love you want to tell the world. So once in a while I get people that really, that, or that claim 
they don't believe in evolution. And my response generally is, well, why not? Really, why not? Your world just becomes fantastically complicated when you don't believe in evolution. I mean, you, here are these ancient dinosaur bones or fossils. Here is um, radioactivity. Here are distant stars that are just like the, our star, but that are at a different point in their life cycle. The idea of deep time of this of billions of years uh, explains so much of the world around us. If you try to ignore that, your, your world view just becomes crazy. It's just uh, untenable, itself inconsistent. And I say to the grown-ups, if you want to deny evolution and live in your, in your uh, world that's completely inconsistent with everything we observe in the universe, that's fine. But don't make your kids do it, because we need them. We need scientifically literate voters and taxpayers for the future. We need people that can, uh, we need engineers that can build stuff, solve problems. These, it's just really a hard thing. It's, it's really a hard thing. You know, in another couple centuries, the, that worldview, I'm sure, will be, it just won't exist. I mean, it's, it's there's no evidence for it, so. I know why it went viral. It's all us Christians going and look at the thing. That's what it is. It's just Christians. complex. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking at the video. I'm, I'm waiting for uh, the arguments for evolution. There is theistic any. evolution. Yeah, it's crazy. Doesn't give any. Darwinian evolution doesn't give any. So w where do we go from here? I mean, he's presuming upon the conclusion within his premise. He's given uh, a speech with the idea that we all should be evolutionists without any claim to that whatsoever he's blinded by love it's blind faith he just so loves it he's blind he says he asked people i don't believe in evolution i don't believe in evolution because i'm a skeptic i want evidence before i'll become a believer he's a believer and he believes i don't because i'm waiting for uh, every time i get a believer in evolution up on the soapbox i say okay you you believe in evolution absolutely it's a scientific fact can you give me one scientific fact well uh, fossils what fossils just fossils and I push for it. And they say, well, I'm, I'm not an expert. You have to ask an expert. There's no experts. If you ask him, say, what was in the beginning? He'd say, I, I, I don't know. Uh, we don't know. Speaking for the whole of humanity, he wants to speak for humanity. They always do this. So what's the, what's the purpose of man's existence? I don't know. What happens after death? I don't know. They don't know. Yeah. It's just a, 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 a silly, unscientific oxymoron to put the word science and evolution together as an oxymoron. Evolution is not a science, and to say it is, is just ridiculous. It's a belief, it's a blind faith, it has no substantiation, it can't be backed up by science, you just have to believe. And he believes to a point where he's in love and can't see anything else. Yeah, you know, and there's a we do believe in evolution. Uh, we believe in micro evolution, and there's a difference between yeah. micro and macro evolution because people look in and they say, so you don't believe in evolution at all? It makes no sense. It's observable. We go, well, we believe in observable evolution, micro evolution. If we have changes within a species, but it stays the same species, but a change from a species to a different type of species is unscientific. There's no grounds for it whatsoever. Absolutely. You know, one of the things that he mentions. Uh, I, I pulled this from uh, Jason Lyle. Boy, that guy is brilliant. I, I, I love that guy. One of us. Yeah, he's one of us. He says, uh, hey, you want to believe what you want to believe, that's fine. But to make your kids do it, um, you know, it is wrong. We don't do that to your kids. Don't teach your kids these things because we need your kids. To which Jason Lyle said, oh, the irony here is this. In the evolution worldview, kids are just a chemical accident. So why is Nye so concerned about what they are taught? The notion that kids are objectively valuable is only meaningful in the Christian worldview where God has made people in his image. You know, if we are here by random chance and it's survival of the fittest, then really we should be able to teach our kids whatever we want to teach them and Christianity will die out. Well, many people have said that Christianity is going to die out. Voltaire, the noted French atheist, said that Christianity will be no more. He said, in a hundred years, my single hands will destroy the edifice. It took 12 apostles to rare. Mm. So what happened to Voltaire's house? Mm. It was turned into a printing press for the Bible. Right. Here's a man that went against God. Same with John Lennon. John Lennon. He what did John Lennon say? Christianity will shrink and vanish. I'm right. I needn't prove it because I'm right. Mm. And he shrunk and vanished. We should do a documentary on John Lennon. We certainly should. You know, uh, what Bill Nye's wants to do is censor information 
Don't tell your kids about creationism. They, they, they should be able to look at both sides and make a decision. He says, kids are future engineers. We need engineers that can build stuff. Well, he doesn't think so. He thinks stuff builds itself. It comes from nothing, and it just takes yeah, leave it alone. Years. <laughs> just leave it alone. It's, uh, I would love to sit down and talk to Bill, because he's not thinking straight. And the whole thing is often so often based on atheism, and atheism is the most pathetic, stupid uh, philosophy you could ever imagine. Carl Sagan was not an atheist, neither was Einstein. A whole stack of these uh, scientists, uh, let me read, believed in intelligent, line, uh, uh, intelligent design. Galileo, Newton, uh, uh, Copernicus, Francis Bacon, smells good, doesn't it? I like bacon. Uh, Faraday, Louis Pasteur, and Kepler. Uh, uh, Einstein was not an atheist, and yet they, if you go on atheist sites, they quote Einstein, they quote Faraday, they quote Carl Sagan, who weren't so stupid enough to believe that nothing could create everything, which is a scientific impossibility. And if you're an atheist, I guarantee if you think about it, you'll change your mind and say, I'm not really an atheist, I'm an agnostic. All you're lacking is a little bit of knowledge to realize how silly atheism is. And I think the starting point that you go with that is one of the criticisms we get, because what you bring in is abiogenesis. Somebody wants to debate evolution with you, you start off with the idea, that thought, that concept of, all right, well, let's just start at the beginning here. I say in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Mm. So before we can get into all of your evolution, let's start with the very beginning. What happened in the beginning? Right. How did we get here? I don't and they know. say what? I don't know. We don't know. Well, can something come from nothing? No. No, nothing can come from something. Mm -hmm. That's unscientific. Right. And that's what you try to point out in a very clear and understanding way. How did we get here? Well, there was an explosion. What exploded? There has to be something there in order for it to explode. Be substance. And explosions don't create order. They create... Chaos. Chaos. So and if it was a big rock that exploded, you're saying life came from non-life. We all... All of humanity, 1.4 million different kinds of insects, birds, fish, all with male and female reproducing after their own kind, plus the seasons, the fruits, the bananas, all things came out of non-life. And life was produced, which is insane. Yeah. Brad Snow, are you still here? Oh, yes. Anything yes. to say? Oh, yes. Um, well, I felt that like the first sentence of his video destroyed the rest of it altogether. He first starts off by saying that uh, the denial of evolution is unique to America and the fact that we live in a country that is the most advanced scientific uh, technological society. I just want to say, you're welcome. <laughs> because, I mean, clearly, you know, he's already given credit to a denial of evolution to an advanced technological society. And he also concludes with the idea that, well, a belief in a creator destroys uh, or prevents people from being able to be scientifically literate and good problem solvers. And that is altogether untrue, and, and no proof of that is at all. In fact, I wouldn't suggest anyone to read the book In Six Days. Uh, it's uh, subtitled Why 50 Scientists Choose to Believe in Creation. I read it several years ago. It is really a, actually a complex book. It was really hard for me to understand, probably because I believe in a creator that created everything. But I, I definitely recommend it for you, though, those that are scientifically minded, because it definitely shows a variety of scientific fields, and all of which have no conflict with the idea that there's a creator who created everything. And Mr. Nile says that uh, the United States is the only country that denies evolution. He needs to get out a little. Go and visit Iraq or Iran, or go to visit India, and, and start seeing if they deny evolution over mm. there. They don't embrace it. They're theist countries. Come out with a video that says it over there as well. Good luck for that. Hey, we got an email from Victor. Victor? Victor. I don't know. Victor. It's Victor, an unusual Victor. spell, Victor. M-A-R-K. Victor, Victor. Maybe we're pronouncing it wrong. Well, he's been born again for two months, and this is his question. He says, my question for you is this. Is it possible that God created the earth old? I mean, what if the earth really is billions of years old because he created it that way? He did create Adam and Eve fully mature and not as newborn, so maybe he created the earth mature as well. And the reason for this would be to give the people that to give and the reason for this would be to give the people that so want to turn away from him. Yeah, I didn't follow that. Uh, it was written in Chinese. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the idea yeah. is there's an appearance of uh, old. Mm -hmm. would, would that be wrong to have an appearance of old when people were created? You know, we look at Adam and Eve. When Adam and Eve were created. We today would look at that as, well, there's the appearance of them being old. He's carrying on a conversation with them. He's telling them uh, to procreate and recreate mature. Yeah, yeah. 
but really there was no appearance of being old because we didn't know what old was back no. then. And it, be before the fall, before sin. And so how aging. old did Adam look when God created him? He looked one day old. I think he would have had a nice trim beard. Nice trim beard. Mm. I wish I could grow a beard. I just tend to shave it right around Friday. I would shave it the rest of the day, but I just... It's, Squirrel. It's not. So, Brad, right, so, what do you Brad, think? Brad had some thoughts on this. Brad, what, what are your thoughts on the appearance of looking old for Adam, or whether it be the starlight, or anything along the nature for victory? Here he is. He's been a Christian for two months, and he's wondering, is it possible that God created the earth to look old? Right. Well, I think just by virtue of the question, he accepts the fact that the, there wasn't actually a passage of time that, uh, that got us where we are. Uh, he's accepting the biblical account that the creation took six days, probably. Uh, and, you know, there's an issue when you consider the fact that uh, in order for us, uh, evolution to exist, that means death had to enter into the world prior to sin. And so, clearly, you try to harmonize, or he's it seems like he's trying to harmonize what modern-day scientists are saying in light of Scripture, accepting that Scripture is true. The problem, I think, that we run into is we have this idea that that the earth is mature, but on what basis? I mean, how do we determine maturity of the planet? Uh, not because of the fact that we're fully functioning and you say, you know, like when God created the world, uh, plants uh, were, had fruit and, you know, weren't grown from seedlings. The, sorry, I'm seeing signals over here. <laughs> um, you know, the, the, the earth is fully mature, so we, you're presuming that there are stages of development they got us where we are, but we have no observation to determine what those would even look like. So the Earth, uh, it was instantly created, but there's no basis to even come to a conclusion that it's a mature Earth. Go ahead. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think. Oh. Uh, <laughs> hey, I got a great quote here from Einstein that I wanted to mention before. Uh, Einstein said, in view of such harmony in the cosmos, which I, with my limited human mind, am able to recognize, there are yet people who say there is no God. But what really makes me angry is that they quote me to support such views. And if you go Googling Einstein and atheist sites, you'll find they, they quote him all the time, making out it's one of theirs when he wasn't. Hmm. You know, uh, Steve Sanchez, a uh, good friend of the ministry here, uh, he likes to corner different people and ask them to give a one-minute gospel presentation. He did this with uh, Gavin McLeod from The Love Boat. Mm -hmm. He did it to uh, a few other people as well. He went to do it for me, but I was gone within the minute, and he couldn't find me to be able to do it. But he, he did it to you. He hit you up, and he said, hey, Ray, can yeah, you give yeah. the gospel presentation in one minute? And mm -hmm. you did it. And here we have it. So this is Steve Sanchez interviewing Ray Comfort about uh, what is the gospel in one minute. I haven't seen this. It's appointed a man once to die and after this the judgment. God is going to judge the world in righteousness and the standard he's going to judge with is the moral law. Jesus said if you look at a woman and lust after her, you commit adultery with her in your heart. God sees the thought life. He requires truth in the inward parts. If you hate your brother, the Bible says you're a murderer. And who of us is guiltless? If you lied or stolen, then you're a lying thief. And lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. So how are you going to do on Judgment Day? We're all going to be guilty. And hell is a reality for all those who die in their sins. But the Bible says God is rich in mercy. He was born of a woman. God became a human being. Scriptures say God was manifest in the flesh. Jesus of Nazareth, who suffered and died on the cross. God commanded his love toward us, and that while we yet sinners, Christ died for us. He took our punishment so we could be forgiven. Then he rose from the dead and defeated death. And what you and I need to do is repent and trust alone in him. Do that today, and you'll pass from death to life. Thank you, Ray! You know, if I could do that again, I'd take my sunglasses off. I think it's important to, when you're preaching God's word or, or sharing the gospel. People can see your eyes and see the sincerity of your heart. But I didn't know it was coming, and it was a hot day, and I'd just been preaching. Hmm. Well, good on you, Ray. Uh, glad good on you. That's a down under saying. I yeah. like that. Well, I good visited on down under with you mm -hmm. over in New Zealand. I don't remember how many years ago, but that was it. Well, good on you, Mike. You know, there are quite a few different uh, objections to Christianity. One is that Christianity is unscientific that there's no scientific basis or foundation for Christianity. And you came out with a, a really neat little booklet, mm. The Scientific Facts Inside the Bible. Now, though the gospel is inside here, I think this is really something for the believer. Mm -hmm. And the idea that we can just stand in awe 
of what God has done. And he's told us what he's done before he's done it. You know, we can look back and go, wow, you know, that the world is a compass or a, a, a circular in circumference. How do we know that? Well, the book of Isaiah tells us mm -hmm. that, that God sits above the circle or the compass of the earth. And that was a time when science taught that the world was flat. Right. If we would have listened to science, then we would have believed that the world was flat. But it wasn't until somebody grabbed a hold of the Bible and they say, wait, no, no, the world is not flat. It actually is round. And I, and I think that's absolutely amazing. In science the book simply of Job, means the earth hangs upon nothing. Oh, well, well you know, there, there, there's so many different so things inside here that, that are absolutely great. If you're an atheist, do you need your, your brain tickle a little? Get hold of this. And uh, or stu just study the scriptures, read the book of Job, and see the scientific facts that are in there. It's incredible. You know, one person mentioned this booklet and said, hey, this is an excellent booklet. I got it for a relative who's been, who has a college degree in science and is a skeptic. I like that these science facts are easily obtained in this booklet, so I ended up using it as a reference guide for witnessing opportunities. But truth be told, it doesn't matter how much science or medical facts you extract from the Bible and you present that to the non-believer, they don't want to have anything to do with it. Yeah. And the reason why they don't want to have anything to do with it is because they love their sin. And because they love their sin, they're going to reject God for all that he's worth. They want to hold on to their sin, and they're going to grab a hold of it as they fall off that cliff on into eternity yeah. unless they come to their senses. That's the blind man. And they need to repent of their sins and place their trust in Jesus Christ. And we want to challenge you to do that today. Bill Nye, man, he's a nice guy, but he doesn't have all of his facts straight when it comes to the things of God. There is a guy. Yeah, you filmed him, didn't you? I'm sorry. I, I did, and I, you know, I didn't even know that it was him. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was filming him, and I actually brought out some other people that were with him, but I, I didn't know who you he was. You snuck into that atheist conference while I was outside giving out books. <laughs> well, I didn't actually make it into the conference. I actually stepped out. I stayed outside, but uh, they were ushering me in, and I well, chose not to go. Well, but hey, stay tuned till uh, next week, and I don't know what we're going to talk about next week, but I know it's going to be amazing because Ray, Lord willing, will be here. But here's your challenge for the week. <laughs> this weekend, hand out five gospel tracts or try to engage in a conversation with one person. That's it. We are out of time. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time, go serve your king. Serve your king. For questions about On the Box with Ray Comfort or to submit questions for future shows, please email onthebox at livingwaters.com. That's onthebox at livingwaters.com. On the Box with Ray Comfort is an outreach of Living Waters. For more resources to inspire and equip you to fulfill the Great Commission, check out livingwaters.com or call toll-free 1-800-437-1893. Now go and preach the gospel. Yeah.